Good morning, good morning, my friends, and welcome to this week. Redstone <laughs> is so beautiful. From secret doors to simple farms to cool contraptions, there are so many things you could do with this stuff. Today, we're going to take a look at five cool contraptions your world definitely needs and how to build those things too. Let's do this. Let's kick things off nice and simply today with probably the easiest contraption out of all of the ones we're going to build today. To build this super simple respawn anchor respawner, you're going to need these materials in exact amounts and, uh, and you're definitely going to want to have the nether. Now, typically, I will recommend building this inside of your nether hub, inside of some kind of building that you have set up in the nether, maybe even in a nether fortress you took over. But uh, for, for the purpose of today's video, this, this field next to a bastion, I guess it'll do. This build is so simple. Let's start by placing a respawn anchor down wherever you want it to go. And then place a dispenser facing into that respawn anchor. On top of the respawn anchor, place an observer looking down and then a solid building block next to it that can take a redstone signal. On top of that, redstone dust, redstone dust, then jump down, put a little bit of glowstone inside of this dispenser, then use one glowstone on the respawn anchor. Look at that, it's magic, it's perfect. All we need to do is set our respawn here. Now, uh, let's say something really bad happened to me, uh, like, like this lava ocean. I fall into the lava ocean, I get taken out. When I hit respawn, I'll pop back up at that anchor, and immediately, this anchor will be refilled. With the help of this super simple contraption, you will never lose your nether spawn again. If you enjoyed that beauty, do me a quick favor, tap that like button, subscribe, and definitely keep watching because contraption number two. So contraption number two is going to get a little bit more advanced. We're going to make a flying machine with these things right here. Now, what should you do with said flying machine? Uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and leave that part entirely up to you. It's your call. Maybe use this flying machine to, uh, well, you know, fly around your world. Or uh, maybe use this flying machine to, I don't know, fly. <laughs> this little contraption is actually way easier to build than you might think, too. We're going to start with a note block going into an observer. The observer looks at the note block and then a sticky piston. To finish off this side of the flying contraption, we're going to go honey block, honey block, honey block. So, that's half of the machine. The other half of the machine is exactly the same. If you build the first part, oh, it's so easy. The only difference this time is we're going to flip it around. We're going to do a note block down there next to that honey block, an observer, and then finally a sticky piston. Now, operating this machine, you need to be careful because once you start this machine, it might be a little bit tricky to stop. What I recommend doing is maybe place a couple of obsidian blocks around this machine in line with the note blocks on either side until you get the hang of it. Now, if you want to go that way, you actually have to hit the note block on the other side. Watch what happens when I hit this. It starts moving that way. Now, with this obsidian block right here that cannot be moved by any of these blocks, the machine's going to stop. If I hit this note block right there, it's going to go back to the other side. That's pretty cool. But there is an easier way to do things. For starters, we're going to go ahead and jump on this machine and be in survival. In survival, if I stand on one of these honey blocks, I will stay on this machine. Check this out. The honey block, I, I'm just going to move with it. I don't need to move or anything like that. Now, when I want to stop this machine, this redstone block, a cleverly named stop, if I go ahead and place that down, it's going to lock the machine. Now, uh, when I pick this thing up, the machine will start going again, so that could be a problem. Unless, unless, of course, in survival, you've got your emergency obsidian. So we place the redstone block on the face of the observer, then we've got this obsidian. We go ahead and place this obsidian right there. In survival, we grab our netherite pickaxe, mine this block right here, and the machine is stopped. Now we can go back the other way. Another fun little upgrade you can make to this machine, if you want to, involves a boat. You place a boat, or even better, a chest boat, on top of this machine and make sure it lines up with one of the honey blocks. And because this boat is an entity, it will be moved by the honey blocks too. It's pretty cool. In survival, check this out. I'm inside of the boat, I hit that note block, and I'm gonna start moving. I mean, in first person, may maybe a little bit glitchy, but in third version, <laughs> it's an easy, efficient way to transport items around your world in, in a straight line. Contraption number three. <laughs> so contraption number three is a little bit of a classic. If you're an OG around here, you will remember this thing. We're gonna build a clock that will turn on as soon as you can sleep. 
Well, seeing as this is a clock that will, uh, you know, like turn on when you can sleep, you'll probably want to build this thing up high in the air. When you do that, uh, place one of these daylight sensors down and then switch it over to night mode. Then go one, two, three, four, and then on that fifth block, place a repeater. Now, now this repeater is going to need to string into even more redstone. When this strings into redstone, depending on how you set things up, you could either use a little bit more or use a little bit less. I'm going to try and set it up exactly how I set it up before, which I think, I think was exactly like that. You leave that repeater like that. Uh... That should all check out. All we need to do is light right there, light right there, light right there, and then finally, we're gonna do a light right here next to this block. Next step would be the aesthetics here. If you wanna turn this thing into a clock, I like quartz. Quartz is really, really easy to turn this into one. Check this out. With a couple of quartz blocks placed down, a couple more staircases around it, and then maybe like a fence or two, you kind of have something that looks like a miniature clock. If you don't believe me, just just wait a second. I'll show you it in a finished build in a minute. But first, let me show you that it actually works. Uh, so it's evening right now. If I walk up to the bed, of course, I can't sleep quite yet. And I will be able to find that out by looking at that lamp. The lamp's not on, so I don't need to worry about it. If I go ahead and watch the sunset, it's going down, it's going down. The lamp's not on, so I can't sleep. If I... You see that right there. I jump into bed as soon as, or like one tick before, the lamp turns on. Just a little quick though, you might have missed this, so watch this, I'll just do it again. As I continuously spam this bed, I'm attempting to get into it, and as soon as I can, the lamp turns on. Like I said, if you're an OG around here, you might remember this contraption from Minecraft Guide Season 3. Ah, this world, this sweet world, I miss it so much. But anyways, sitting at the heart of my world, I built a big build that kind of looks like a clock tower. On the build, I put that simple little contraption that I just showed you. With this built in my world and sitting so high up, I was able to see it from like almost any spot, at least around the central lake. And even better here with this thing built, I knew that anytime that lamp was on, I would be able to sleep. If I wanted to. Look, if you're new to redstone, this next build it might be a little bit of a doozy. It's kind of a lot here, but it's really, really cool. To prepare yourself for the upcoming and amazing looking 1.20 update, let's design a chiseled bookshelf door. So here I am inside of my library. I've got chiseled bookshelves all over the place. This one right here is going to be the key though. If I interact with most of the books on this thing, I'm gonna get nothing. Like literally nothing will happen at all. However, this purple one, that's the key. If I interact with this, the door swings open. I walk inside of my secret room. If I press this button over here, the bookshelf back outside, it'll refill. And if I go ahead and flick this lever, the door will lock, which means if I were somebody else and I came over here and tried to interact with this, nothing will happen. The, the door is locked. You can't open it. Red zone for this build. I mean, kind of simple, but also at the same time, it's, it's kind of a lot. Before I start this build, I want to send a big, big shout out to OMG Chad's secret door video because I learned part of the circuit from there. I'll leave a link down below. For this build, we've got essentially like three or four different circuits. We'll start with the most complex one though, the chisel bookshelf. So the chisel bookshelf, start with your input bookshelf or in other words, the bookshelf that's going to control the whole contraption. Behind this bookshelf, I'll place a building block and a building block. Place a comparator and a redstone dust. Now, I'm gonna be a little OCD with this build and try and build it all on this smooth stone, or at least like when it comes to the redstone, I'm gonna put it there. So here's a line of redstone. Back over here in the front of this thing, this spot is going to correspond with a redstone signal of one. This is gonna be two, that's gonna be three, that's gonna be four, that's gonna be five, and that's gonna be six. The comparator is going to output the signal based off of the last book that you interacted with. So, uh, let's see, uh, if we go ahead and interact with that, we're gonna get a redstone signal of one. Let's go ahead and put that back, though, and say that this spot, that book right there, the fifth one, is going to be the lock on the circuit. Knowing that, we can go ahead and go back behind this thing and count one, two, three, four, five. Right here, we dig down and we put a redstone torch. Then we can go ahead and get rid of this extra dust. We need it to extend one past whatever we're locking it at. That means if we were, say, working on the third book like that, I'd go one, two, three, put the redstone torch right here, remove those right there, and that torch too. We'd have redstone that looks like this. Anyways, though, if we're locking on our fifth one, we have a redstone torch that sits on the side of the block that has our fifth redstone dust. We go one redstone dust past, and then we do a repeater. Then we do another redstone dust, and now I'm OCD again. I'm gonna swap these blocks out and run even more redstone, wrapping back around to this torch. Very important. Now, uh, after this, we can go ahead and step things back up if we wanted to. What I'm going to do is put my sticky pistons kind of in line with the chisel bookshelf, except like one block behind. By lining things up this way, that's going to ensure that our secret door is in the corner. But you definitely don't have to do that. If you want your secret door somewhere else, then put your sticky pistons wherever you want that door and adjust the design. 
If I interact with this fifth book, nothing is going to happen to these sticky pistons. And by the way, we'll put those there. Now, uh, if I interact with this one, the door is going to stay essentially locked. Interact over here, nothing, nothing at all, nothing at all, nothing at all. But when I hit this one, the door opens. That's the door circuit, basically. By interacting with anything other than this fifth book, the redstone line is going to stay on, even if I interact with any books past it. By interacting with a book past that fifth one, the repeater turns on and the line is locked still. So that's the whole door thing. Now, next up, let's talk about refilling this bookshelf after we use it because it's so simple. To start, remove this block right below the chisel bookshelf and place a dropper facing up. Inside of that dropper, place books. Below that dropper, I'm gonna place this block right here and then I'm gonna run a redstone line. This redstone line is going to go into my secret room somewhere. Where specifically, doesn't exactly matter. For this build, I'm going to say uh, it's going to go right here. And I'm going to put a button on this block right there. Below that block, we're going to run a redstone line running over to the block that sits right next to that dropper. Now check this out. It's empty right now. If I power the button once, the dropper fills the bookshelf back up. Now in your survival world, you would have a wall sitting right here. And then you'd also have a wall sitting over here. Again, secret door in the corner. You know, you want to try and blend things in. Maybe make it look like a library or something. We power this every single time. We'll get a book back inside of this thing. And you can keep powering it and it'll keep filling it no matter what. This thing is obvious. That's very obvious. <laughs> To get around that, at least in this room over here, I put a handy crafty table right in front of it. You could put anything else in front of it and it'll help blend it in. Maybe put a couple other decorations around so it doesn't stick out too much. I take that book to open the door, then I'm inside of the room. I press this button to refill that spot, but the door is still open. Last and honestly least today, this is so simple to set up. It's so simple that I'm not even going to worry about the redstone. All I need to do is run a line connecting to this thing somewhere, and then I power this thing. When I power that, the door is locked. I recommend placing a handy sign in between these two controls to remind you what's what. And then from this point on, it's all up to you. Decorate your room, do the design however you want to do it because the entire contraption, that's 100% it. You've got yourself a super secret room that is locked by one single book on a bookshelf. Last and definitely not least, we're gonna use the materials on this side of the chest in exact amounts and this side of the chest in non-exact amounts to build one of the best nether portals you've ever seen. If that last contraption lost you a little bit, don't sweat it really because it was a little bit complex. This one is gonna be so easy. To start, all we need to do is build a nether portal. This nether portal can really be as big as you want as long as it's at least three blocks wide. Behind your nether portal in both corners, place dispensers facing forward, just like that. Now, over on this dispenser, we're going to place temporary block, temporary block. Remove that middle temporary block, replace it with an observer. On this one, we need the face of the observer looking away from the dispenser. Now, if you saw this video right here, you might recognize this one, and that's because this is that build from this video. If you like these simple videos like this, I highly recommend checking that one out after this one. So, look at this. With this simple contraption set up on this side, when I power the button, water is dispensed and then picked back up. Just like that. Shifting over to the other side now, inside of this thing, we're going to place a flint and steel and then a skulk sensor right next to it. As soon as I move around, that is powered like that. As soon as I press this button, water is dispensed and then picked back up. Except problem, we have a repeating circuit. The skulk sensor is too smart. Adjustments can be made here. Uh, for starters, you can just do wool right behind it. That'll occlude everything right there. And then you can actually power this thing. And I'll turn off. When the water spills down here, though, the sensor might see it. So, to fix that up a little bit more, we could place even more wool there, maybe a little bit of wool there, a little bit of wool there, and heck, uh, maybe the sensor goes right back there. That way, when the sensor is right behind this thing, if I move around right in front of it, it picks me up, but if I move around over here, it, it doesn't see me. This is a setup I generally really, really like, because if you're too far from this thing, the sensor won't hear you, and if you're walking around, like, over here, the sensor doesn't hear you either. You'll have to walk, like, right over here in line with the sensor to actually light the portal. Now, in that original video, I talked a little bit more about design aesthetics and what you could do to make it look a little bit nicer. But one big life hack I've got for you today, slabs. Place a slab in front of the portal. That'll trap the water into the portal. By placing slabs and solid blocks all around the portal too, check this out. Uh, we're going to have that lit. And then when I want to unlight it, water will pop up over there, but the water will take care of it. So you're basically like ready to go every single time in the future. Oh, <laughs> it's so simple and it's just so cool. I love this thing. Five cool and super simple redstone contraptions for your world. There you go. Big thank you, patron gang, the great Vegeta, Michael H, Rob, and CK. Appreciate you.
For more cool red zone videos, check out that Skulk Sensor one next. It's been me, Waddles, with the list week. Like, subscribe, thank you for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye!